pregame.com. I'm Vegas Runner. He's Brian Leonard. Going to break down some NBA primetime action. I'm of the opinion that primetime games, marquee matchups, TV games, call them what you will, offer some of the biggest, greatest value you're going to find. Because bookmakers know they're not just going to get wise guy money, you know, as they would with Cleveland State playing Wisconsin Green Bay. So I think they're more, you know, prone to put out a fair line that we could take advantage of based on perception. Today we're going to cover Mavs Knicks. This is the first time they're meeting this season. And no surprise, the number one selling NBA jersey this week, not LeBron James, not Kobe Bryant, none other than Jeremy Lin of the New York Knicks. They're calling him the Tebow of the NBA. I think this is what the NBA needed. In, in a lockout shortened season, this is the kind of jolt that really brings some excitement to the NBA. Because with March Madness around the corner, you know, the NBA kind of fades until the playoffs get here. But now with Linsanity taking center stage, all of a sudden there's some excitement in the NBA. I mean, you turn on ESPN, it's NBA front and center. Um, so I, I think he's good for the game. Is he for real? Time's going to tell. Mavs are at the Knicks. Again, this is a primetime game. Who do you like? What would you make your line? I made the line pick them. I agree. It, it's, it's interesting. Um, it's such an ESPN phenomenon. If ESPN wasn't around, would he ever get any of this publicity? No. Like in the years past. And it, and it helps, number one, the NBA's got a bad reputation of guys with 27 girlfriends with, with different you know, mothers and babies and everything. To get a guy from Harvard, number one, an Asian player, and the NBA has always been going after that Chinese, the Japanese markets. Um, it, that's another thing that, that's great for it. And number three is everything I've heard from this guy, he's a really nice guy. Yeah. I, th I think that's what brings everybody in is he's more like them. Because how many times have we, you know, even on ourselves, going for a job interview and everybody else got so much more experience, you just want that chance. And this guy's getting the chance now. I'm, I'm, I've never been a Knicks fan or anything. I'm not, I'm not a fan of a lot of players. I'm really rooting for this guy. I, I am too. I find myself rooting for him as well, Brian, because what I've noticed more than anything else, and that's why I compared a little bit to the Tebow, even though there's Tories are two totally different things. This kid went to Harvard. You know, Tebow was a Heisman Trophy winner. Mm -hmm. You know, he was expected to maybe not do well in the NFL as a quarterback, but he was a stud athlete. You know, Lynn Sanity, nobody was really courting him from, you know, Duke and... and Places like that, North Carolina and Kentucky, I don't think he had options to go there. Maybe Duke on a scholarship that was more about his grades in high yeah, school. But, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but with, with that said, I think where they, they kind of similar is the fact that the team enjoys it. The team loves the guy. You know, it's not like they are, are jealous or, you know what I mean, he's getting all the attention. He says the right things, and he's always talking about the team, not himself. And I think that's where the similarities match, and that's why we're seeing the Knicks. All of a sudden, there's excitement there. They've won seven straight games. They've covered nine of their last ten. Again, when Stoudemire is, is 100% and back in game shape, when Carmelo comes back and he's in game shape, what is Lynn going to produce? Time will tell. But for right now, he's given the Knicks an opportunity that they didn't have when Carmelo and Stoudemire was there because nobody else really cared about this team. They weren't winning. They weren't competitive. Now, all of a sudden, the studs are going to come back, and this team is only finding themselves one game behind Boston for second place, five games behind the Sixers for first. So Jeremy Lin has put them back in contention. Say what you will, but I don't think you like that side this week. No, I'm going to... Go with some value, I think, on the NBA champions as opposed to the young team right Who here. got no respect. You know, they never, not to cut you off, the, the, the NBA champions, NFL champions, the next year never do well against the spread because they're so overvalued. But this Mavs team, not only did they not get respect last year at all, 
and won it by fluke, more or less, people? You, you stop 10 people on the street and ask them who won the NBA Finals last year, you're lucky if two of them know that it was the Dallas Mavs. Yet here they are, they're 19 and 11, two back behind San Antonio Spurs, one of the best spread records in the NBA at 18 and 12, and you're right, no respect. I'll give you a list of the reasons why I like Dallas here. Uh, one is because of the Asian market. They're jumping all over Jeremy Lin, and a ton of money is being bet in the Asian market on the New York Knicks. So you're going to get an inflated line because of that, number one. Number two, they're playing this game. Each team has a day off. Dallas is a veteran team. They have not been very good when they've been unrested. But with a day off, exactly one day off, they're 12-7 and seven against the spread. Um, you talk about the Knicks being hot coming in. Well, Dallas is hot, too. They've won five straight games. Now, they do play Boston tomorrow as we tape this, so we'll have to see what happens there. But they're a team that's playing very good ball right now. Let's examine the New York games they've played so far. They played New Jersey, Utah, Washington, Minnesota, Toronto, Sacramento, and, and I'll say it, the L.A. Lakers. The Lakers game was the Lakers with no rest yeah. after beating Boston in overtime the game before. So they played a lot of mediocre to bad teams. Now give them credit. They've done very well, and they've covered these games, the majority of these games. This is a big step-up game for them. It is, and when you, you hit it right on the head. Strength of schedule for the New York Knicks, 29th in the NBA. Strength of schedule for the Dallas Mavs, 12th. So, I mean, it, they're not even in the same league as far as teams played so far in the season. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the Knicks, their stats, points per game, shooting percentage, you know, both offensive and defensive, rebounding, they're mediocre at best. You know, they, they find themselves right in the middle of the pack at the very best. This is an average team that's gotten hot. And you brought up a great point about the Asian betting market. We here in America, in the States, we don't, a lot of us don't realize the world's a lot bigger than this. Yes. You know, most, most people in the States don't even own a passport. You know, we think the world revolves around the United States. It's not like that in the betting world. There's a reason the Greek and, and so many others pulled out of the U.S. market and are still doing fine. You know, the rest of the world wagers, and when they wager, it matters. And none bigger than the Asian market, as far as betting goes, from what I've gathered. With that said, the one thing I will add is this. What I've learned from years back when, when I was bookmaking is recreational bettors tend to avoid streaks when they didn't jump on it at the beginning. Meaning, when a team's covered four, five, six in a row. Recreational bettors tend to fear jumping on these teams if they weren't there when it started and they're just riding the wave. They kind of bet the streak to end, which doesn't make sense because we all know if you bet a streak to end, you could only cash one ticket. If you bet a streak to continue, you could cash 10 in a row. But for some reason, it seems to me, bettors kind of back off and want to wait and see now when this streak ends. Because perfect example is last night, Knicks played Sacramento. And from what I gathered, there wasn't one-sided money on the New York Knicks side from the betting public. In fact, we saw that line come down a little from 7 to 6 early in the morning. Do you think that the Knicks will continue to attract public money, public money, public money, even on a, on a, a game like this, primetime game? I do, and the reason being, and I mentioned it before, ESPN. I mean, that's the number one story. I mean, all they're talking about, I mean, there, there's guys out there, there was an article today in the paper that the president was getting into insanity. I mean, when it gets to that point, yeah, um, it's going, going to continue. And I don't know if I fully agree with your thoughts on the general public. I, I, I happen to think, you know, when you talk to somebody um, who bets for a living, they say, well, how can you bet against this team? They're hot. And they want the hot team. What they don't want is a team that is a good team who is playing bad ball right now. They'll say, oh, I saw them on TV the other day. They're lousy, which is another reason why I'm not big on watching a lot of games. Right, right. Uh, you, get, you just get to totally overflow, over, over yeah, overwhelmed and by knee -jerk reactions. knee jerk reactions. Um, so I, I don't know if I fully agree with that. You would know more than I did from being from the bookmaker side. I'm just looking at it from the betting side. And, and when I've given out plays and I've given out ugly dogs, and, and I don't have a problem giving out an ugly dog who's lost 10 games in a row as long as there's value on it. I agree. And anytime a client has always questioned it, 
They never question when you give out the team who's won 10 in a row. They question when you give out the team who's lost 10 in a row. And that's just fr from, my, from my side point on that. It makes sense. So you're going to buckle Buckland sanity? I'm going to root for him. Just but, not the New York Knicks on keep, Sunday. Keep in mind, and another reason here is Carmelo Anthony may be back for this game. Yeah, that's the thing. He's questionable for Friday, which means he's close to getting back in the lineup. This one's a TV game, prime time. I don't think Carmelo is going to want yeah, Lin Sanity getting all the attention I, anymore. I don't, I don't think he's going to sit the bench in this game. And I agree. And if you've watched enough and followed enough sports, when a key player comes back, it takes a little while for them to get back into a routine. And, and the market overvalues it. The market overvalues it. And the point guard, I mean, he hasn't been with the Knicks very long. Yeah. He hasn't had his full team. He's not used to it. He doesn't know where these guys want the ball. He's going to throw off their entire... I agree. They're, that's a great point. If you see Carmelo Anthony back in, I, I got to I gotta go against the Knicks as well. Especially with Jason Terry, also questionable. He's out on Friday. This is a guy with 15 points a game for Dallas. So he's out on Friday, probably won't play on Sunday. If you get Carmelo back in the mix for the Knicks, Jason Terry out for Dallas, that's the perfect storm for the market to overvalue the Knicks, undervalue Dallas. We might have a play on the Mavs. I don't think it matters if Terry's in. He's not. He's you know, not the he's key. Not move yeah, the yeah. Line. I don't think. Except for Dirk, it, there's no. Yeah, yeah. If Nowitzki's in or out, but yeah, yeah. He, uh, Ter Terry is a key component of that. Yeah, of I that agree. Team. Uh, he's a veteran leader, and I, I, to be honest with you, I want him to play, but it's not going to make a difference in the line. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't think it's going to make a difference, but it just. You just couple it with another reason. I think a, a, a recreational better will will see that, and that's just another check mark to jump on the Knicks. You know, um, I'm gonna have to go with Brian here. I I don't want to be caught on camera saying I'm going against Linsanity right now, but he made perfect sense as far as value on Dallas. So we're gonna give the nod to the Mavs on prime time. Don't forget go to pregamevideos.com. All videos will be there in that thread along with conversation. We're doing four today. We'll be back with one more primetime game, a big one, Orlando and Miami Heat.